Welcome to the Hilton and Allen Computer Club setting up your wireless networking video. Step one is to unplug the power plug on the cable or DSL modem. Step two is to unplug the power plug on the back of the WRT54G or your wireless router. Step three is to turn off the power on your PC. This can be accomplished by turning the power switch on the back of your PC off and or holding down the power button on the front for 10 seconds or more. Step 4 is to turn off the power on your laptop. This can be done by shutting down Windows or holding the power button for 10 seconds or more. Step 5 is to plug the Cat5 cable from the WRT54G WAN port to the cable or DSL modem. Step 6 is to plug the Cat5 cable from the Linksys WRT54G router uh, port 1. Any port could actually be used, but in this example we're using port 1 to the PC WAN connection. Step 7 is to power on the cable or DSL modem by plugging in the power plug that you pulled out in the beginning of this process. Wait at least 45 seconds for the modem to become operational. Watch for the lights to become steady before proceeding to the next step. Step 8 is to power on the Linksys WRT54G by plugging in the power plug that you removed in the beginning. Wait for the power light to stop flashing and the WAN light to be steady before continuing on to the next step. Step 9 is to power on the PC and then start Internet Explorer or your favorite browser. When your Internet Explorer comes up, click the URL box and enter the router's IP address which is 192.168.1.1. This is for Linksys and if you have another brand you'll have to consult the manual to see what the default address is. This will present you with a username password dialog box for the username type in admin, A-D-M-I-N, again for Linksys. The password is also admin. If you have another brand, you will need to take and consult the manual for its username and password. Click OK, and you'll be presented with the setup screen for the Linksys router. If we scroll down a little bit to see the whole screen, we can see the internet setup is set for automatic configuration. In 90% of the cases, this will be what you leave for the setup as either the cable or the DSL modem network will provide the settings for you automatically. The network setup, this is the local network. Your address is the 192.168.11, which is fine in most cases. Again, leave alone if you don't have a reason to change it. The DHCP server is enabled. You want to leave this enabled so that your PC can get its address from the router. The rest of these default parameters are fine unless you have a reason to change them. You will want to change your time zone to be Eastern Time on the East Coast. Make sure the automatically adjust clock for daylight savings time is clicked. And then hit Save Settings. Upon successful settings, you will be presented with this next screen. Click Continue to return back. The rest of these settings in the screen I will briefly show just for completeness. DDNS is a screen that you would use to set up with dynamic DNS. This is an advanced feature. MAC address clone, you would go here if instructed by your ISP. Normally you don't need to deal with this. Advanced routing is for advanced functions if you're going to do advanced networking. The next area you want to cover is the wireless tab. The basic wireless settings you will want to choose mixed in most cases. This allows selection if you want to only connect to B type devices or only G devices, you would choose one of them. The default mixed is okay in most cases. Here is the SSID that we talked about in the uh, presentation. The default router is Linksys. You will want to change this to be something other than Linksys. There should be some name that means something to you but does not identify you to the outside world. Uh, this is what people will see when they browse for networks and what you will see when you browse for a network to connect it. So I'm going to name this thing H-H-I-C-C-D-E-M-O. For our purposes, the wireless channel 
the default of six is fine. If you have a lot of wireless devices or experience interference, you might want to change it to something like 11. I personally use 11 because I've found it to be pretty error free. Uh, the wireless SSID broadcast, this is where you allow the SSID to be either seen publicly or not. You will want to leave it enabled in most cases so you can identify it. If you don't leave this enabled, you will have to enter in this information before you can connect. For most cases, and if you make this SSID something that's private but not identifiable, you'll know what it is and that will serve you fine as far as security. You will click Save Settings. When the settings have been applied, we will get this screen. You type Continue to go back. The next item we are going to set up is wireless security. By default, security is disabled. This is not recommended as anyone can access your wireless point and use your internet and possibly access your computers. If you click on the bar, the different options will be available to you. We are going to choose WPA Personal for this demonstration. The TKI encryption is fine. The WPA shared key you will want to enter in a 8 to 64 character unique identifier that you will provide for the connection when you hook up with a wireless device. For this example, we're going to type A, B, C, D, 1, 2, 3, 4, which is the 8 character minimum. The more characters, the more secure it is. The group renewal key of 3600 is fine. We'll then save the settings. When the router has saved the settings, it will present us with the settings or successful screen. Click Continue. The next item of security will be the wireless MAC filter. If you enabled the wireless MAC filter, you'll be presented with screens that will allow you to either allow or disallow specific computers based upon their MAC address. We are not going to cover that in detail at this time as the WPA security, I believe, is sufficient in most cases for most people. Advanced wireless settings is another series of settings that are advanced and I'm just showing it here for the purpose of being complete. As we review the tabs on this Linksys router, the security tab by default blocks anonymous internet requests, filter multicasts, and filter idents. These default settings are fine the way they are and they are recommended this way. We're not going to in this demonstration go into the details. VPN tab shows you that you have the different VPN pass choose enabled. That is fine by default. Access restrictions is a screen that allows uh, sophisticated uh, advanced internet access. We're not going to cover it in this demonstration. Applications and gaming tab, tab allows you to set up uh, access to your router from the internet for the purposes of games and special programs. Uh, not a topic of this discussion. This is an advanced topic. And the sub-menus under this also are not going to be covered in this demonstration.